Hello, my name is Shannon Wortham. I'd like to talk to you a little bit about my family's trip to Sydney, Australia in September of 2019. Um, you know, give you a little bit of background about Sydney um, and Australia in particular. Um, we, the people we call Aboriginal people, um, settled in Australia somewhere between 60 and 40,000 years ago. They've had a continuous cultural heritage uh, ever since that time. They have lived on the continent long enough to see some pretty dramatic changes uh, here depicted in some of their art. On the left is a, uh, a large bird like a ostrich or emu. It's been extinct for 10,000 years. The image on the left is a thylacine, uh, also known as a Tasmanian tiger. It's been extinct on the mainland Australia for several thousand years. Uh, it lived on on the island of Tasmania until the early part of the 20th century, but is now extinct entirely. This cultural heritage changed dramatically and suddenly. In 1770, when Captain Cook landed in Botany Bay, um, just about 20 years later, uh, after Cook claimed the island for Britain, a fleet of 11 ships carrying settlers, indentured servants, and the like entered Port Jackson and founded a colony in what would shortly become known as Sydney. This is Botany Bay. It's a large bay area to the south. That is what's known as Port Jackson. And Sydney, as it was back then, founded right there. A few basic facts. As a former British colony, um, Australia is part of the British Commonwealth. That's the Union Jack there on the top left of the flag. The stars depict a constellation only visible in the Southern Hemisphere called the Southern Cross. Um, as a result of their membership in the uh, British Commonwealth, Queen Elizabeth is still on their money. Um, cultural holdover, um, they drive on the left side of the road. It took a little bit of getting used to. The Aboriginal people who got pushed aside for nearly two centuries um, have been engaged in the civil rights movement, uh, not unlike those seen in other parts of the world. It reached a fevered pitch in 1967. There was a referendum proposed and accepted that amended the Constitution of Australia, returning rights and citizenship to Aboriginal peoples. It granted them the right to vote, own property. Um, since that time, they have regained many of their uh, Aboriginal lands. Um, that flag in the bottom of this slide here is the uh, Aboriginal flag or flag of the Aboriginal people. You'll see it at various cultural sites around the greater Sydney area. Another little fun fact about Australia, 19. In 1932, the Australian government declared war on emus, a large flightless bird, similar to an ostrich. Um, their efforts went on for nearly 20 years. Uh, depicted here on this slide is a newspaper article from 1953, um, talking about the latest effort in the war. Um, none of this bore any significant fruit. They killed a small number of emus. On the whole, didn't really damage the population much at all. Um, as a result, you'll see uh, memes on the internet from time to time about Australia being the only country that's ever lost a war to birds. Anyway, this is our family. We um, left the United States. Uh, from Dallas, Texas, we boarded an airplane at around 10 p.m. on September the 14th. We flew for 18 hours, crossed the international date line 
and landed in Sydney at 6 a.m. on September the 16th, pretty much skipping September the 15th altogether. We flew on a Qantas Airlines uh, A380s, the largest passenger aircraft in the world. Uh, you see it depicted there on the top right. See the two rows of seats, two rows of windows rather. It's a double-decker airplane. It's huge. Okay. The photo in the bottom right is a picture I took out the window on our way into Sydney. You see the uh, Sydney Opera House there, the Port Jackson. Sydney is uh, in the Southern Hemisphere and their seasons are somewhat flipped of ours. So September in Springfield is like March in Sydney. So it was late winter, early spring when we got there. So kind of chilly, kind of rainy. It, um, well, Sydney feels like a, any modern city. city. Um, it, pretty quick, you start to see things that are not like home. Here's some pictures of uh, unique flora from around the city area. The top, uh, I'm sorry, the left photo there, that's a crested pigeon. The tree is a Norfolk Island pine. It's a, not indigenous to Australia specifically, but uh, a neighboring island. It's grown as a landscaping tree around Sydney. The uh, small, what looks like a small black and white bird is actually about the size of a crow. That's the Australian magpie. See those all over. The uh, charmer there in the bottom right, the Australian white ibis. In, uh, it's not uncommon to see these birds in Sydney just eating out of trash cans. <laughs> Obviously, they're quite used to tourists. It let me get very close. Port Jackson is the, uh, in the if you remember the first image, is a large inland uh, waterway. And it's a prominent geographic feature in, in Sydney. Um, this is uh, a view out of our hotel window. You see in the bottom part there some of the, the docks or piers from, they call it the Circular Quay. And uh, of course, this Opera House, the north shore of Port Jackson, is visible there. Uh, you get around a lot of uh, the tourist sites around Sydney by ferry boat. They're all part of the uh, transit system. Um, you can buy a single uh, Opal Pass, and that will get you on buses, trains, and even the ferries pretty seamlessly. Uh, there's another view of the Opera House, and then the, one of the other ferries uh, leaving the circular key over there. Uh, sorry for the blurry photo. Uh, as a librarian, um, I found out that we were just a few blocks away from a uh, library. We had to make a little side trip to that. This is the Customs House building. Um, Sydney was a major um, import export location for uh, Australia. And as such, you know, goods coming and going from the harbor had to pass through or at least be documented at the customs house. Uh, this building no longer serves that purpose. It is um, the lower story is general meeting spaces and cafes. The second and third floors are a uh, public library. In the, uh, the foyer, they have a scale model of the circular key area and Sydney Harbor. Um, it's got LED lights uh, in it and they uh, change uh, like sunrise, sunset over the course of the day. It's it's pretty pretty cool thing to see. Um, picture on the right there, that's uh, the docks of the piers of Circular Key and the Customs House Library circled there. So the library was pretty cool. Um, a large space, very modern. It was nice to kind of see how other people do it and talk to librarians from the other side of the planet. These are a few examples of artwork that uh, we saw in the building. 
depicted there on the left is a photo from uh, some of the marches uh, that led up to the passage of the 1967 referendum. You'll notice that several of the protesters are carrying Aboriginal flags. Uh, on the right is the screen print. Uh, I think it's a screen print, I'm not actually sure, but a piece of art depicting an Aboriginal woman with the slogan, you are on Aboriginal land. Uh, Sydney is a thoroughly modern city, more in a European sort of style. Um, you can get around on mass transit, like I mentioned earlier. Uh, on the left there is one of the train stations we passed through. Uh, on the right, it's very British style post box. I thought that was kind of funny. Um, we did uh, take a few excursions. Uh, these are some photos from an area called Watson's Bay. It's on the outer edge of the harbor. Um, the bird depicted in the left there is a rainbow lorikeet. You see the right photo there. It's a cockatoo just about ready to, to take off. Some of the unique flowers there in the bottom right. There are um, walking paths that uh, go all along the, the cliff side for the most part and you can walk and uh, just really take in the sights and sounds. It was quite lovely. Had a much more tropical feel than obviously the city itself. This is a view um, out Watson's Bay, literally the bay there. You see the sun setting in the west and to the, the left side there you see the skyline of Sydney proper. Another of our excursions were to the Blue Mountains. We uh, took a uh, a Dreamline, I think it was called Dreamline Walk with an Aboriginal tour guide. That's a, a petroglyph of a kangaroo scraped into the creek bed rocks there. The Blue Mountains are a temperate rainforest. Um, it was uh, damp, um, lots of mosses and ferns. Um, a guide took us down through a uh, forested canyon to this waterfall that was the, the terminus of our hike. Um, It was uh, it was very beautiful and, and unique experience. If you can manage it, I recommend that you do it. Um, you're probably fully aware Australia has very unique wildlife. Um, it's tough to get to see a lot of it in in the wild without I don't know taking great pains. But there, uh, if you're in the Sydney area, I strongly recommend that you go to this Featherdale Sydney Wildlife Park. Um, it's uh, like a combination um, uh, sanctuary and petting zoo. Um, <laughs> here is a, a ray, another of the large flightless birds, and a, a chick. Uh, the echidna. Um, most of all the um, non-birds in these photos are marsupials. Uh, marsupials are common in Australia, but not really the rest of the world. The only uh, marsupials you'll find outside of Australia um, are this uh, creature here to the left is a tree kangaroo. Uh, they can be found in some islands um, to the north of Australia. And of course, uh, in North America, we have our possum, the only other marsupial to be found outside of the South Pacific. Uh, of several different species of kangaroo. These were very friendly. Um, the koala bears there, um, they have, I don't know, 20 or so. They spend most of their, their entire day asleep. They sleep something like 20 hours a day. Uh, their diet of eucalyptus leaves is not super nutritious and is actually kind of low level toxic. So they invest a lot of their metabolism, metabolism in uh, processing that. Um, 
here we have the dingoes. They were brought to the islands. They're not, they did not evolve in Australia. They were brought to the islands by Aborigines thousands of years ago um, and have since um, naturalized. They are descended from European gray wolves very, very distantly. Got some more of the various kangaroos. And what would would it look like if we didn't include some of the uh, more crocodile dundee sort of things? Uh, the left there, that is a, um, I can't remember exactly what it was called, some kind of dragon, the water dragon, maybe. Um, it was posed next to a very, very large uh, freshwater crocodile. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, uh, if you have any questions or anything, I'm sure you can get them to me. I'd be happy to answer them. Otherwise, thank you for uh, listening to me talk.